For more, I am joined by political journalist John Fun. John Fun, thank you so much for coming here tonight. Now, John, we saw this big protest outside the DNC headquarters. It took a violent turn with the demonstrators calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. There's been arrests. What did you make of these scenes, and how is the Israel-Gaza conflict starting to cause real fractures on the left and in the Democratic Party? Well, one of the truisms in Washington is that the media covers dissension or disagreements within a political party completely differently depending on which party it is. Every disagreement or schism in the Republican Party is dissected and analyzed to a fairly well. Democrats basically keep their mouths shut uh, and reporters who might hear their private complaints don't really publicize them that much. But they're enormous fissures in the Democratic Party. And the Hamas attacks of October 7th and the Israeli response have brought those out. And that's what we saw at the Democratic National Committee. There is a violent, angry section of the Democratic Party that is pro-Palestinian, frankly, pro-Hamas, and they are now asserting themselves. And there are about 20 in the Democratic House caucus that will vote against measures uh, opposed to Hamas. And the rest of the party is terrified that the American people will see the Democratic Party as identifying with these people or not disciplining them. That's why I think they had to shut down this DNC protest, because if they didn't, there would be another protest the next day and the next day, and it would be in the news every day. And assuming, John, that these protests continue, and of course, Assuming that this conflict in the Middle East goes on, and I don't sadly see any end to that anytime soon, do you think that we could then see a replay in Chicago, where we're going to have the Democrat National Convention next year, of that famous 1968 convention in Chicago again for the Democrats, where you had anti-war protesters and the cops squaring off, and again, it was chaos? Well, you're a very good historian, James. Uh, we have an interesting historical parallel this year. Uh, a obscure congressman from Minnesota is challenging an incumbent president who's very low in the polls in the New Hampshire primary and maybe may have a surprise for that incumbent president. And that's the same thing that happened to Lyndon Johnson in 1968, Gene McCarthy. This year, it's Congressman Dean Phillips from Minnesota. And of course, the Chicago Convention was a, was in night, Chicago in 1968, and now it's of course in Chicago again in 2024. And history could repeat itself. We could have a protesters riot. We could have a police riot. Uh, we could have all kinds of things happening in Chicago because it's a highly combustible city. Indeed, John, and I want to talk about now where the Democrats are sitting more broadly nationally, not just within the party. The Democrats are becoming less and less popular. Trump continues to pull well ahead in the polls. The latest Real Clear Politics average of polls has him at 46.5 to 45.2 percent. But crucially, swing states that Biden might have been able to count on are swinging Joe, uh, Donald Trump's way. It's early yet, but the Democrats seem to be drifting towards oblivion. Sources I've talked to say that they know the election is unwinnable if it was held at this point. What is their next move on the Democrat side? Well, the swing state polls that you referenced came out just before our off-year elections last week. And they panicked the Democratic Party. There were immediate calls for Biden to reconsider his decision to run and all of that. Those were temporarily stayed when the Democrats performed above expectations in the midterm elections in Virginia, New Jersey, and other places. Uh, but those concerns will continue to rise because the polls aren't budging and they're being confirmed by additional polls. Uh, I believe in the end, the Democratic Party realizes that it can either go down to a defeat up and down the ticket, or it can change the top of the ticket and hope that changes the conversation. I believe the Democratic Party it will continue to try to find a way to convince Joe Biden not to run. And that may even involve in the end saying that the Hunter Biden thing is going to surface. Uh, that will be a surprise, but the Democrats are that desperate. Now, the problem that that creates for the Republicans is this. Biden runs very poorly against Donald Trump. But what if Joe Biden is not the Democratic nominee? Other Republicans 
do fairly well against most potential Democratic candidates, but Trump not so much. So that would be create a bit of a controversy and a bit of a debate about electability inside the Republican Party as well if Joe Biden were not the nominee.